Have you ever wondered what it was like if we could print and duplicate money? Money would solve most of the world's problems, but overprinting can lead a national Zero. economy to plummet. What is that? That's America's housing market. More money, more problems, as they say. Since we're not printing counterfeit money anytime soon, we took to the internet to learn of people who printed counterfeit money and almost got away with it. Keep watching to learn more. Number 1. The Money Painter J.S.G. Boggs During a diner visit in 1984, J.S.G. Boggs sat at a booth doodling, waiting for the waitress to bring him his order. As he had his donut, he began drawing on a napkin, something you'd see straight out of a movie. But when he drew the Roman numeral for one, his head floated away, and he ended up drawing a $1 bill. The waitress, seeing the completion of his napkin doodle, was impressed and offered to buy the drawing from him. When it was time to pay his bill, which was 90 cents, he gave the waitress the bill. Unknowingly, she didn't realize that it wasn't a real $1 bill and gave him back 10 cents change. From there on, he had money on his mind and never sold his Boggs bills. He just spent them. In fact, he went through an era of excruciating currency recreation and adding little quirks to them. If he went somewhere and they accepted his bill without question, he asked for the change back when necessary. Some of the quirks he added included the phrase, Kunstbank of Bohemia, on larger bills, or JSG Boggs, Secret of the Treasury, on some. While it was time consuming, he even made prints of his bill and sold those. This wasn't the only thing he did with those bills though. When he made a transaction and it was accepted, he noted this on the bill and then sold the receipts. When the collectors went to find the sold bills from the incredible artist, they would try and offer a price for the bill. JSG Boggs would offer assistance in finding one of his bills for a small fee, so he wasn't directly profiting from his art, just his assistance. The wild goose chase made JSG Boggs quite notorious to not only art collectors, but eventually the Secret Service. In 1992, JSG Boggs had an interview with the Associated Press to discuss his art collector scavenger hunt scheme. When the Secret Service raided his apartment and confiscated over 100 of his counterfeit pieces. At the time, JSG Boggs was a resident artist at the Carnegie Mellon University of Pittsburgh, and he was staying near the university. For him, this wasn't the end. After visiting London and Switzerland, he tried his counterfeit technique almost everywhere. He found that in some places it worked better than others. That's when he hit the art jackpot with Swiss businesses. Because of his art, he was able to dine with the best and have friends in high places while being able to move into the best five-star hotel the area had to offer. His handcrafted currency was made with a fine pen and looked incredibly legitimate. After this, he wanted to try his luck and not plant his feet for too long in one place. When he went to London, he created an art exhibit of oversized tenders. When the constables saw, they raided his event and took him to jail. After that, he was actually charged with multiple counts of forgery and counterfeiting. It was less than three years later when he was arrested in Australia, furthering continuing his counterfeit journey. However, he got lucky and even got paid. The judge at the time dismissed his court case and awarded him $20,000 for damages. After learning from his experiences and taking advantage of many countries, he had plans to photocopy his legal tenders, more than $1 million to be exact. He wanted to put them into circulation in the economy and make sure others had the opportunity of reaping the benefits of his Boggs bill. All right, get the fuck off my boat. After the Secret Service learned of his future economy plan, production on the $1 million Boggs bills halted, and his case was dismissed. In 2017, the master artist passed away in a Tampa motel. His real name? Steven Litzner. He was 62. Number 2. Money in the Toilet The Notorious Albert Talton just like in the movies, there's a hidden room that looks quite plain at the Secret Service headquarters. In this room, which is named the Specimen Vault, the walls are lined with filing cabinets. In these filing cabinets are plastic sleeves. Each plastic sleeve contains one piece of currency. While the face value of the tenders are much higher than what's printed on them, every single one of these bills are counterfeit. The room, which is both priceless and worthless, contains every single tender that was confiscated by the United States by the end of the 19th century. The most notorious part of this? Most of the bills in the cabinet lined walls were actually successfully spent. Because of the lack of technology and the skills of artists, these bills were replicated easily, without confiscation until much later. 
It wasn't until 2005 when the Los Angeles' Secret Service sector discovered a $100 bill that was fake, but very high quality. It's no wonder how it passed as a legal tender. The three years between confiscation of this bill and the origination of this bill allowed the notorious counterfeiter, Albert Talton, to produce and circulate more than $7 million in faux currency. Talton was no stranger to the system, though, as he was a criminal for the majority of his life. Born in Southern California, the charming man was actually quite smart and loved tinkering around with inventions and reverse engineering, something he did often. When a successful product came out, such as a Bose stereo, he took it apart to find out the successful technology and recreated it in his own version. Much like the currency he got away with for so long. He didn't own any fancy machinery during his first currency run. In fact, he didn't even own a computer. It wasn't until after using an HP inkjet printer that he learned to clean up the fuzziness of the image. After going through trials of this, he learned about counterfeit detection pens that were introduced in the 20th century because of previous counterfeit catastrophes off <laughs> JSG Boggs off. <laughs> Between early 2005 and early 2007, hundreds of thousands of counterfeit bills created by Albert Talton had been confiscated, and every single person had the same thing to tell. I had no idea these were counterfeit. The Secret Service could barely tell either. In August of 2008, the lover of the lavish, Albert Talton, pled guilty to conspiracy and the manufacturing of counterfeit tenders. He was only sentenced to nine years in a federal facility. We have to wonder if he was able to pull off anything similar with his commissary account in jail. Number 3. Frank Barassa If you thought $7 million in counterfeit money being circulated was a lot, you have to check out Frank Barassa who was able to pass off more than $250 million in fake money. The best part? He only got six weeks of jail time. The man was a master in the art of legal tender reproduction, as well as the master of luck. The downfall of Frank Barassa started in May 2012, when the Canadian police seized more than a million dollars worth of phony $20 bills. They were able to arrest multiple people, and noted that the money was practically undetectable to the naked eye as fake which is why it could be passed around in circulation for so long. The operation was able to replicate the dark vertical stripe that the real $20 bills were notoriously using to stop counterfeit money. In fact, Frank's fake money was so realistic that the police didn't believe he was in on it alone, and they thought he was just taking the fall. They thought that because of the complexity of the faux money, it had to be created on a much larger scale, and that one person couldn't handle something so sophisticated. Even though four others were arrested, Frank was the only one to be named. He was charged with possession, distribution, and the production of counterfeit currency. He was fined around $1,300 US dollars and still knows the secret location of the missing $50 million. Not only is he now out and roaming around, but there's a possibility that he's still using counterfeit money. The missing stack of cash weighs more than 5,500 pounds and still looks exactly like the real money in circulation today. If you're wondering how mesmerizing that is, just think about 820 feet worth of $20 bills. You might be asking yourself, why $20 bills? Simple. Most merchants won't put a $20 bill up to a light and check any markings, although they're mostly replicated in the counterfeit money. Since the weight of the fake bills matched the real bills, they were unable to be detected by the normal, experienced cashier. If the bills were any larger, Frank Barassa may have been caught much sooner. He's quite cocky and dubbed himself the god of counterfeiting after he was released. Oh, yeah. He got away with so much and more, with the possibility of harboring even more counterfeit money since he didn't spill the beans on where the rest is located. His response to when people ask where the rest of the money is, you'll have to ask my accountant. Complex mathematical questions are involved, or something similar. Number 4. Wayne Victor Dennis, The Notorious Fake Millionaire when people brag at their class reunion of being rich, most of them have money, but not as much as they say. When it comes to Wayne Victor Dennis's case of being a fake millionaire, it's mainly because he was producing millions of dollars in fake money. While he was incredibly smart as a child, it was clear from a young age that he didn't like authority telling him what to do and what not to do. Because of this, the standard desk job from 9 to 5 wasn't going to work for him, and he knew that early on. He wanted luxury, he wanted leisure, and he wanted to get it in any way that he could. In the early 90s, his uncle gave him a space in Florida where he tried to invent in one of the warehouses given to him. 
many failed inventions later, Wayne and his uncle realized that those inventions were a pipe dream. It wasn't until Wayne realized that his favorite movie could become somewhat of a reality. To Live and Die in LA A movie revolving around the circulation of fake money, he convinced another inventor friend that he could make convincing fake money. Since David Spiller, his inventor friend, had more money than Wayne did, he pitched the idea to Spiller, and he agreed to finance the operation. It takes money to make money, right? Just half a year later, Wayne Victor Dennis produced more than $12 million in fake money and split it with his financing friend David Miller, in thanks for funding the operation and keeping it quiet. He then gave half of what he made to his cousin since they were extremely close, and because he also helped with counterfeiting the money. Then, his cousin decided to bury the money in the grassy area of his dad's business, Wayne's uncle's cleaning business that gave him the warehouse originally. That way he only put down like 5%. Of course, Wayne found a stripper friend named Alexia Lopez, who got some of the bills herself. They tested out the bills at small places like restaurants and moved on to the big places like casinos. They were able to successfully pass over $1,000 in fake bills within 48 hours. Of course, one of the cashiers caught on and thought it was fishy. Then a secret service agent caught Wayne, and Wayne gave the phony description of, I found a suitcase full of money in Miami. Eventually, Wayne Victor Dennis confessed and even blurted out where the remaining bills were. He told them that his stripper friend had nothing to do with it and she didn't even know they were fake. An obvious lie, he was sentenced to four years in prison and six months of house arrest. Spiller, the bank of the operation, was sentenced to seven years in prison, and Joey, the one who buried the money, was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Wayne Victor Dennis wrote a memoir in jail titled The Counterfeit Millionaire, where it became a bestseller. He told his tales of lessons learned and earned his money the real way by working for it. Number 5. Victor Baranov – The Most Legendary Counterfeit Figure Let's take it back to a time when technology wasn't as advanced and getting away with counterfeit money was incredibly easy for someone who was skilled and brave. And while many got away with counterfeit cash in the 90s, in the 70s it was even easier. Viktor Baranov is noted as one of the most prolific Soviet counterfeit figures. It was found that he had fake money circulating in more than 100 cities. His specialization? Soviet Karbovinets. Because of how incredibly accurate Baranov's money was, they thought a highly skilled team was behind the counterfeits. He was an incredibly smart man that loved to invent, but little did his neighbors know, he was creating counterfeit cash in his research laboratory in a shed next to his home. After accurately replicating the most difficult counterfeit currency in the USSR, he didn't go out for days at a time in hopes to create an abundance of currency for circulation. Once an actor, the counterfeit criminal was arrested April 12, 1977 in Cherkesk when he was selling a batch of counterfeit currency. He invented a unique machine that was able to replicate the print currency using molds and paint composition. To this day, some of his techniques are still being looked and people are still in awe. One of the earliest criminals caught in counterfeiting, it just shows how much technology has changed in the last 50 years. Have you ever dreamt of printing thousands and thousands of dollars that could solve your problems? Do you think you'd have the cojones to do the same as the five money masterminds above? While we don't recommend replicating money, we do recommend using the same amount of passion on earning your money. If only they had done that in the first place, they may have been sitting in a better spot. Do you have any other crazy counterfeit stories? Have you ever caught someone using a fake bill? Let us know below.